We're going to begin with the growing fears that the war in Ukraine could cause a disaster at Europe's largest nuclear plant. The U.N. Secretary General is calling for a demilitarized zone around the facility, which is in Russian-occupied territory in Ukraine. So this is tricky. Both sides blame each other for shelling the area. This morning, Russia said its forces are there to prevent what it called a Chernobyl scenario. That's a reference, of course, to Europe's worst nuclear accident. Charlie Daggett is in Ukraine tracking this growing crisis. Charlie, this sure sounds very dicey. Good morning to you. It is. It is serious, Gail. Good morning to you. We are at the Hostomel airfield just north of Kyiv. This is the scene of one of the early victories for Ukrainian forces. But today, another fight is underway where the battle over the nuclear power plant has been pushed to the brink. Both sides issue ominous warnings of an attack today. Ukrainian officials say Russia plans to stage a false flag incident at Europe's largest nuclear power plant and blame Ukraine just hours after Russia accused Ukraine of trying to stage an accident there. The threats are timed to coincide with a visit to the country by Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan and UN Chief Antonio Guterres. The area needs to be demilitarized. And we must tell it as it is. Any potential damage to Zaporizhia is suicide. President Zelensky demanding an immediate and unconditional withdrawal. Russia must stop all provocations and certainly all shelling, he said. We cannot allow Russia to deliberately put us all on the edge of a radiation catastrophe. Ukraine accuses Russia of using it as a military base for troops and equipment. Shaky social media video appears to show Russian military vehicles parked inside the complex. Russian forces captured the plant in the early days of the war, but in the past two weeks, it's come under sustained shelling as fighting intensifies in the southeast. While there has been no let-up in Russia's relentless missile strikes on eastern cities like Kharkiv, where officials say at least 19 have died and dozens more have been wounded in two days of heavy bombardment. The Russian government has already rejected a U.N. proposal to demilitarize the plant, calling it unacceptable, saying a withdrawal would make it even more vulnerable. Vlad? Charlie Daggett in Ukraine for us. Charlie, thank you.